Welcome to week 9 edition of Around the MLS show with Sam right here on Africa Sports Network. <laughs> week 9 did not disappoint after all. A lot of teams showed a game game pressing high octane heavy metal attacking soccer in both East and Western Conference. In 14 games, we recorded 35 goals with only one away win and that was DC victory at Orlando City Football Club. And who says old Sim Ball is not working in Houston? The hell in the shell stadium as dug by Houston Dynamo fans saw the team in another one nil home win and they kept a clean sheet. Four games, zero goals conceded at home. First MLS team to do that. Great piece of soccer history created by the team. Whose technical staff just one year old at the hand and now is the time to take such energy you have at home to road games maybe a week a draw at the rebels arena might be the catalyst for houston dynamo all right now, slicky fc cincinnati just throw past portland timbers at the tq stadium fc since bounce back from their 5-1 trashing in week 8 at City Park to pick Portland Timbers to a 2-1 home win to still maintain their unbeaten home form. Robin Damobodo, who has an ego named after him, started for FC Cincinnati. His seven start in seven games he has played so far this season. Typical FC Cincinnati, who always turned a dead ball situation into a swift counter-attack got rewarded in the 34th minute when Andre Barriel quickness from a throw-in put a fine cross inside the balls to cause a panic and then Sergio Santos connected with a diving header to send Tikio Stadium to wide ecstatic celebration. Meanwhile, Andre Barriel transfer to Udinese in Syria are is still ongoing. Brandon Vasquez doubled the lead for FCCC in the 58th minute. Darren Asprella was at the right, at the right time to tap in a rebounded ball spilled by FCCC goalkeeper Roman Salantino, who has five clean sheets in his last nine league matches so far. But the home team held on to another three points at home. 20 points from night games tied on the same point with New England Revolution at the top of Eastern Conference but goal difference is the tiebreaker so now let's go to FC Charlotte the Polish connection in Charlotte in a swift display of counter-attacking soccer between two Polish players uh, that was beautiful to watch just look at how he connected with his countryman to put FC Charlotte one nil up and that goal decided that tie in that game so Charlotte FC still powering strong strong LAFC still unbeaten in the MLS I mean when they were going to Nashville I was thinking that Nashville might be the team to end LAFC unbeaten run this season with Hany Mukta the MVP in Nashville game and when you look at LAFC you ask yourself how does that team maintain their high recruitment strategy and also how they're able to navigate the city every season lafc are contenders for the mls Cup. remember they are still defending champions as they remain unbeaten so far this season they battled to a 1-1 away draw at nashville soccer club mvp hani mukta showed up in that game against mls most potent attacker when he put Nashville one nil up in the 34th minute. Gabonese striker Danny Buanga pegged Nashville back when equalizer his 12th in all competition for LAFC. For the Galaxy, there is no Vedas in Galaxy. At Austin FC, we are trashed 2 0 at Carson, California. 
Austin continued to underperform as they went down 2 0 at LA Galaxy. The Greg Vanny team needed all the good vibes in that game as a result to placate their home fans. Chicharito and Brigitte Pugge gave goals gave LA Galaxy their first win this season. For Austin FC, they are victims of their own success. I mean, they are Cinderella run to Western Conference Championship game last season. And their wobbly, shakily start this season is a sharp contrast to what the fans expected from the team that finished second behind LAFC in the Western Conference Championship game. Austin are languishing outside the playoff zone. Only two wins in eight games. The Los Verdes have an 8.5 conversion rate with 8 points from 8 games and that is an average of 1 point per game. Now let's go to Jules Stadium in the game between Sporting Kansas and New England Revolution. One week same trouble for Sporting Kansas. Their search for their first win this season stretches into the ninth game as they slump to a 2-1 away defeat at the Revs. The long injury layoff of William Magada, a team with MLS greats like Johnny Russell, Hungarian striker Daniel Shalloway, but their weakness at the center back and, their, and the quickness to build from the back has been non existence means that Sporting Kansas are scoring fewer goals. Only three goals in nine matches this season they've scored. What a poor goal record for Sporting Kansas. Sporting Kansas were trailing the refs 2-1 only for Andre Pontas to get a red card and all the good vibe vanished. With that win, New England Revolution had joint top in the Eastern Conference 20 points from 9 matches while Sporting Kansas continued their search for their first win this season. Maybe they might get it in week 10. Right, the Sierra de Montreal got their redemptive win at home with a 2 0 win over Red Bulls of New York. A win needed to relieve the pressure which has reached boiling point at Stadio Saputo. Felici stake for Toronto Football Club as um, Philadelphia Union trash FC Toronto by four goals to two. Mikael Ure's hat trick reminded the entire MLS fans of what Philadelphia Union is capable of. They are semi finalists in the Champions League for a reason. And their domestic form has been questionable. This is Philly Union's first win in five games. Their wobbly domestic form make one question if coach Jim Carton has prioritized the Champions League because when you get to semi-finals you know you are within a touching distance to the trophy. Philly Union they have an attack that has 13.7 conversion rate and they've scored 14 goals from 44 shots on target. So in all when you look at week 9 it's, 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 it's a kind of a misgrade of performance from several clubs. So let's look at other results from around the league. All right, our Colorado Rapids, we are held to a 1 1 draw by St. Louis, who are still top of the Western Conference. Seattle battled to a 1 0 home win over Mena, so that while Atlanta beat Chicago Fire by two goals to one. Right, let's look at Team of the Week. I'll be right back. All right, so welcome back to the program. This is Around the MLS Show with Sam right here on Africa Sports Network. All right, so let's go to Team of the Week. Players that were exceptional for their clubs in Week 9. We're going to start, um, let's look at players that made it in the goalkeeping department. We have um, St. Louis goalkeeper, Roman Buck. We have um, the defense line, Alvaro Barriel um, of FC Cincy, Donovan Pines of um, DC. You have Daniel Sterres of um, Houston Dynamo. Remember that the Sterres was part of that defense team that kept a clean sheet against Inter Miami. So in the midfield, 
We have Andres Gomez of Ray Salt Lake. We have a Matthew Chionere of um, Charlotte FC. We have a Joe Apollo of um, Seattle Sanders. And we have Ricky Pig of LA Galaxy. While the front three comprised of a um, Veroni of New England Revolution, Mikai Ure of um, Philly Union, and Santiago Rodriguez of New York City Football Club. This front three attack. You can count seven goals sandwiched among them because Philly Union Mika got a hat trick, um, New England Revs got a brace, and Santiago Rodriguez of New York City Football Club also got a brace. So seven goals scored among these front three that made the team of the week. But then, I mean, when you look at um, Steve Clark's performance for Houston against in Tama, I think Steve Clark um, deserved to be part of that team of the week. You can't tell me otherwise because a player, a good player that kept a clean sheet and one that considered. I understand that um, the goalkeeper of St. Louis might have been exceptional in their game on the road. But when you look at how Steve Clark has performed for Houston Dynamo, I think he deserved to be the starting goalkeeper in this team of the week. But then, what do I know? Just let it be. Let's go. All right, so on this note, we come to the end of today's edition of Around the MLS Show with Sam here on Africa Sports Network. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on all my social media platforms. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed week.